So in this lecture, we need to talk about the juxtaglomerular complex. And earlier, I mentioned in the event where we are dehydrated, we are losing water. Okay, so when you're um, when someone's working out a lot, they lose water, and then they're also losing salt. Okay, and so um, this juxtaglomerular complex, what it's going to help to do is to increase our blood pressure because as we lose all these uh, all this water and salt our blood pressure is going to decrease right because there's less fluid that's traveling within the blood vessels okay and so how does this process happen well here within the juxtaglomerular complex we have a couple different main players here so we have the macula densa cells and the granular cells so the macula densa cells are found within the um, ascending limb of the, um, the ascending limb of the loop of tendon. Okay, so that's what I have shown here. So here are these cells, these macula densa cells, and then these granular cells here are, it's like the smooth um, muscle layer here that's found on the outside of the um, afferent and efferent arterioles. Okay, and so uh, how these, the macula densa and the granular cells, how they communicate with each other is by the release and the inhibition of ATP because um, what what this is going to do we can control the diameter of the afferent arterial so the afferent arterial can either dilate or it can constrict and so when the afferent arterial is going to um, whenever it dilates what it does is it increases the glomerular filtration rate. Whenever it constricts, it'll decrease the glomerular filtration rate. And so what the glomerular filtration rate is, the amount of fluid that's um, traveling through this, um, through the glomerular capsule into the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, and so um, <clears throat> the macula densa, this what it does, it detects the changes in salt. Okay, and so Whenever there is a low salt concentration, right, for instance, when we're dehydrated, um, what that means um, is that um, whenever there's a low uh, salt, that means that there's low glomerular filtration rate because there's less fluid that's getting through. And so um, what's going to happen to the diameter of the afferent arterial? It's going to dilate. Okay? And so how the afferent arterial dilates is through the inhibition of ATP. So when the inhibition of ATP, when it doesn't communicate, when, when it doesn't reach the granular cells, what the granular cells do is they secrete what's known as renin. Okay, and so what renin does is it activates um, a cascade of events known as the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So when renin is released and then it gets into the blood, it makes its way to the liver and it converts um, some, but what's found within the liver is angiotensinogen. So renin is an enzyme and it'll convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. And so angiotensin will travel um, through the blood and then once it um, reaches into the lungs, it's then uh, the enzyme here found within the lungs is known as ACE. So angiotensin um, converting enzyme and so it converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. And so angiotensin continues to travel in the blood before it makes its way to the adrenal, um, adrenal cortex. So once it reaches the adrenal cortex, it can then um, allow the release of what's known as 
aldosterone. And so aldosterone is a steroid, uh, it's derived, uh, it's a steroid compound that's derived from cholesterol. And so we've already discussed the uh, mechanism of how aldosterone works. Because just thinking about what its effect is, it increases the sodium um, reuptake at here in the um, distal com or uh, well, it actually does it in the distal convert, but I'm just going to put the um, collecting valve. So um, once this aldosterone uh, binds to its uh, receptor in the cytosol, it then activates the cascade of events where we can get that um, what's known as epithelial sodium channel and get it into the, the membrane and then allow the influx of sodium um, into, into the cell. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this is how this uh, process works, and the net effect is that we increase our blood pressure. And so that's going to be it for this lecture, and we're going to talk uh, more about another hormone in the next one.